Seches Ksubis Daf Mem Hey continues the Gemara's discussion of a Nara Hamaorasa that's accused of Znus. The Gemara will have three primary sugyas. The first is what happens if she is a Bulgaris by the time she is accused of an action that she did when she was a Nara. Does her halacha change because her body has changed? The Gemara will get into the general sugya of Hishtana Haguf. The halachas change when the person passes a milestone in age and bring proofs to both directions and resolve it. The next sugya is the sources of the varying halachas as to what happens to a Nara. Emma Arasa is accused of Znos. When does she get skilo? Where does she get skilo? When does she get chenek? What are the sources for all those things? And what happens to the man if he accused her falsely? And the third sugya is when the man accused her falsely, falsely, does he have to pay knas or does he only get malchus? And in what situations is there a machlokus? We'll have two versions of a machlokus about it. So first of all, we're discussing Nar HaMarasa. Now, Nar HaMarasa is a girl between the ages of 12 and 12 and a half who was engaged to be married. She had Kedush and she didn't have Nesun yet, and she is accused of Znus. So the Allah is as follows if she's guilty, which we'll first discuss. The sugya of if she is guilty. Guilty, and in order to find out that she's guilty, we need proof. So you have two possibilities here. Either witnesses came, or she was accused by her husband, and he was able to substantiate his claim. So you have the accusing is the case of Moisey Shemra, and you have the case where witnesses came and said that she was Mazana. Either way, the halacha is that if she was, A, she was a Nara, and B, she was a Orasa, she was engaged, and then She's accused later and found guilty. We've found proof that she was Mazana while she was in Arham Arasa. But we found that proof when she was already married, she already had Nisu, and Allah is then that she gets Skila. Now, the Skila takes place, the Torah says, at the gate of her father's house, which more explains as if to make an announcement, look what kind of product this household produced. Now, if some of these factors change, she's not an Arab, she's not Marasa, she wasn't married at the time that this story came out, then Allah would change from Skila to Chenek, or possibly in a different location. The Gemara will go through that. So the Gemara says there are three possible halachos for the Nara. Hamarasa. Halacha number one is the classic, as we've just discussed. She has witnesses that come when she's already married, after Nisuin. Witnesses come and say, while well, she was in Nara, Hama Ora, so she was Mazana. There the halacha is, she gets skila at the gate of her father's house. Now, if the witnesses come while she's still a Orasa, before she is a Nisua, so here you have a split. If she was a Nara at the time that they came, she'll still get skila, but it won't be at the Pesach base of Viha, it won't be at her father's gate, it'll be at the gate of the city. Now, the main focus of our sugi will be what happens if she was a Bulgaris already by the time the witnesses came. She was still a Maurasa, but now she was a Bulgaris. She was a Mazana as a Narha Maurasa, but the, witness only, the witnesses only came as a Bulgaris. So now she's in the Shtana Hagof. Her body has changed from the status of Narha Maurasa. What punishment does she get then? So here you have a Machokis between Sheila and Yechuna and how to say over a Brysa. Shayla says that because she's no longer, at the time the witnesses came, she's no longer a Nara, therefore she doesn't get skill anymore. The whole parsha was only said on a Nara, she gets Chenek. Now, Yechonah says it's not true, because her action happened at the time that she was a Nara. It doesn't matter that she grew up and became a Bogeras before the witnesses came. Her din doesn't change, and she still gets skila. Now, the Gemara says... That it's, it, we therefore seem to have that Shayla is learning the Brisa, that if her body changes by the time the witnesses came, her din changes. This is what the Gemara calls nish, Nishtana Haguf, Nishtana Hadin. If her body changes, the Lacha changes, she no longer gets Skila, now she gets Chenek. So the Gemara has a problem with this, and that's why we have a Brisa that says, what happens if it wasn't witnesses that came, but the husband that accused her? And he accused her after Nisuin, obviously, and he says, I didn't find Psulim. So she was not a Besula. There, the Lacha clearly is that even if she was a Bulgaris at the time, but he's accusing her of being a Nara Hamarasa that was Mazana, so she would get Skila. The fact that she was a Bulgaris didn't change her Halacha. So you see the fact that her halacha, that her guf changed, the body changed, she became a Bulgaris, does not change her Halacha. So how could Shayla say otherwise? So, the Gemara brings a 
few approaches to this. Rava wants to say you can't bring any proof from the accusations of the husband. The case of the accusations of the husband are different. Because over there, the Torah was mechadei shenu halacha. That even though normally her din should change and she should get chenek when she becomes a bogeres, the whole situation of her being accused by her husband happens after nesuin. And if a woman would be mezana as a nesua, she would get chenek anyway. So she would be mezana now. At the time of her accusation, she would get chenek. The Torah is a mechadesh, a special chiddush de halacha, that it's, that she, that her, her halacha, her din, her punishment will follow the time of her maisa, of her avera, of her crime, and it'll go with that she was a nara hamras at that time, and she'll get skila, even though had she done it now, she would get chenek. Therefore, don't bring me from the fact that here, if she was a bogeras, she gets skila. That's because this is a whole special different parsha. This is a whole different exception. The parsha of Mesi Shemra is a different din. And just like the fact that she's a nisua doesn't change her halacha from skila, the fact that she's a bogeras doesn't change her halacha from skila. That's Rava's argument, and Rava says, therefore, this is no proof to our, what we were discussing, was when there's nothing to do with Nisuin, when witnesses came after she became a Bulgarist, there it's not a Chiddush, the Torah doesn't have a special parsha of a uh, Naraha Marasa that witnesses came, there's no special Chiddush there. Now, Rav Huna disagrees, Rav Huna Breda of Yeshua disagrees with this argument of Rava, and he says he can't compare the Torah's Chiddush, that the Torah says that if she is accused by the time she became a Nisua, can't compare that to if she's accused at the time she became a Bulgaris. Changing to a Nisua changes her din from a Bas Skila to a Bas Chenek. A woman who's Mazana as a Nisua gets Chenek, while a woman who's Mazana as an Arusa gets Skila. That changes her din, doesn't change her guf. We were discussing the changing of the guf when she changed from an Aru, from a Nara to a Bulgaris. The fact that the Torah was Mechadesh, that even though if she would do it now and her din would be one of chenek, but in the case of a Nara Marasa where the husband accused her, there we have a special chidesh and she gets skila even though had she done it now she should get chenek, doesn't say anything about the fact that if she would be a Bulgaris, we would go with what happened at the time of, with what she was at the time of her crime. One thing has nothing to do with the other. Therefore we reinstate our proof. The fact that if she would be a Bulgaris at the time that she's accused by her husband, she would still get skila, proves that changing her body does not change her din. And the fact that the Torah is mechadesh, that the fact that she's in a sewa doesn't change her din, that doesn't, that doesn't make this an exception, because that's talking about her being in a sewa. It's not talking about a change in the body, a change of the guf. Now, the Gemara then brings Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak says this whole sugya of Nishtana HaGuf, Nishtana HaDin, is actually a machlokas Tanaim. In a totally different sugya, you have a machlokas between two Tanaim. What happens if a person changes? Does his halacha change? What's that case? It's talking about a Nasi or a Kohen that is elevated to being the Nasi and to being a Kohen HaMashiach. Uh, after he did an Avera, the halacha is that a regular person or a regular Kohen who did an Avera has to bring a Kisva or a Seira. That's their carbon. If, however, they are a Nasi or they are a Kohen Mashiach, then they have a different carbon. Then their carbon becomes a Sa'ir and a Par. So the question is like this. If a person was a head yet, he was a regular p- p- person, and he did an Avera, and it was Bashogeg, so then he brings a Kisva and a Seira, fine. If he was a Nasi or a Kohen of Mashiach, and when he did the Avera, so then he has to bring a Sawyer or a Par. What happens if it changed in the middle? What happens if he did the Avera when he was a regular person, and then he found out about it, and he was uh, he tried to determine his Kabara, and to bring a carbon, that will happen after he already became a Nasi or a Kohen Mashiach. What should he bring now? Should he bring what he would have been obligated at the time he did the crime, or should he bring what he's obligated now at the time that he's passing in the Halacha? So the Gemara there brings the Machlok Stenai. Gemara said that the Chachamim say, you go by whatever he was before at the time of the crime that happened. And that, therefore, is going like the opinion that says, Nishtana HaGuf is not Nishtana HaDin. He changed his situation from being a regular person to a Nasi or a Kohen Mashiach. It doesn't change his Allah, he still brings the carbon headed. 
Now, Rabbi Shimon disagrees. Rabbi Shimon says he doesn't bring any carbon. He's potter. So Gemara wants to say, you see, the reason why he doesn't bring a carbon is because neshtar haguf, neshtar hadin. It all changes. Now he has a different halacha. Now he has the halacha of a kohen hamashiach. So the Gemara says not so fast. It's not quite the same. You don't have him here saying that he brings the car. You don't see that Rabbi Shimon says he brings the carbon of a kohen hamashiach. And he brings the carbon of a nasi. That's not what he says. He says you don't bring any carbon. The reason he says you don't bring any carbon is because he holds that the carbon that you're supposed to bring depends on the two parts of the obligation. Both the crime and the knowledge when he found out that it was in Avera, what you did, those two things together have to be in the same status. Here, he can't bring any carbon because you don't have those two things in the same chiyot. The crime happened with one carbon, and the knowledge that it had occurred happened with a different carbon. Therefore, you don't have the two factors and in any one carbon. Therefore, it doesn't bring any. But he doesn't say that you need to have, that you change the din. He's not saying you change the din. He's saying the din is determined by both steps here, and both steps here aren't the same. That's why you can't have the din. Now, the Gemara now calls Rebbe who we mentioned earlier, and Rebbe Yechanan says that Nishtan HaDin does not change, uh, Nishtan HaGuf does not change the Halacha, she'll still get Skila, even if she was a Bulgaris, and he has a Drusha, the Gemara says, because it says, uh, it says, um, Nara HaMeorasa, it calls her a Nara, but it says Hanara. It doesn't say Osa, it says Hanara. It doesn't say Hotzi Yuha, take her out. It says take the Nara out. That's to include even a woman who was a Nara but is now a, a Bulgaris. She still applies to the Parsha and she still gets Skila. So the Lord asks if that's true, that a woman who was a Bulgaris still is in the Parsha of Narha Marasa. So then if she's accused by her husband, the husband should also be in the Parsha, even though she's a Bulgarist at the time of the accusation. And if he's accusing her falsely, he should still get Malkus and have to pay a hundred shekel fine. So the Gemara says, no, it's very different. And the Gemara has an interesting exchange here. The one who asked uh, was uh, told, Rahman al-Tzlon may hayit daita, may the merciful one save us from such a thought. And he said, no, may the merciful one save us from what you're saying. The Gemara concludes, and the Gemara says that the solution is very simple. The crime of the wife is the time of his nus. So therefore, that goes by when the znus happened, which is while she was in Aramarasa. And therefore, it doesn't make a difference if she became a Bulgarian when she was later found out. However, the, when she's accused falsely, and we're talking about the husband having to pay kanas or get malkas, it doesn't go by when he accused her. That goes by his crime, which is when he accused, when he made the accusation, not by the time that he said she did something. She didn't actually do anything. His accusation was while well, she was a Bulgarian already. So now, therefore, he doesn't go into the parsha. The parsha only happens when she was in Nara at the time of his accusation. Okay, the Gemara now moves on into the next part of the sugya, which is the halacha that the Nara Hamarasa gets skila at the Pesach base of Via. So Gemara says there are three possible locations. If she has a father with a father's house, she gets skila at the Pesach base of Via. If her father doesn't have a house, then she'll get at the Pesach Shar Ha'ir at the doorway to the city. If there is no city, and that would be because she's in a city which is majority of the Kachavim, so it's not a Jewish city, so you can't blame the city for it, then it'll be at the Pesach of the Beisdin, the door of the court. Now, the Gemara says the same halacha applies to someone who's over to Hoyt Zara. He gets skila as well. His skila should be at the gate of the city, and that's the city in which he did the Avod Zara, not the city in which he was taken to court. If it's a city that's majority over the Kachavim, then it'll be at the door of the Beisdin. So the Gemara puts these two halachas together, that of the the woman that's Mizana and the Ovid of Udazar, and the Gemara says, what is the source of these halachas that it has to be at the gate? So Gemara says, the Torah says, clearly it has to be at the gate. The question is, which gate? So Gemara says, it's got to be the gate at which he was of Udazar. And you see that by linking the two times the Torah uses the word She'arecho. When it discusses the Avodazar that he did, it says, It's talking about where he did the Avodazar, and we speak about She'arecho your gates, and then a few psukim later, we talk about the punishment that he gets, he says, 
And it's the same Sharecha, just Sharecha before was talking about where he did it here also. We're talking about the punishment, we're talking about where he did it, not where the crime occurred. Now, the Gemara says we learn something else out of this word Sharecha. We learn that it has to be your gates and not the gates of a of the Kechavim city. So if the city's majority of the Kechavim, you go to Basin. So you already used the word Sharecha. Gemara says, no, you could have said Shar for the first Joshua, Sharecha is extra, and that's a tichi, the second halacha. Now the Gemara says this only was said by Abu Zara. I didn't know that the same halacha applies to a Naram Rasa. So Gemara says that is because the word Shar is linked to the word Pesach, in discussing the Mishkan, it says Mesach, it says Umasach Pesach Shar Hechatzer, so Pesach and Shar are one, and as far as talking about the Naram Rasa, it uses the word Pesach twice, it says it's you and I Pesach base of Viho, and it also says this Masach Pesach Shar Chatzar, like we said before. So, therefore, we know to link Pesach to Shar, and there's two Sharim, like we said, the Drasha up to now, and that's how we know these halachos. All right, now the Gemara goes into the next part of the Sugya, which is what happens if she's accused falsely by her husband. So, the Torah says that there is Malkus, and there is also a fine of 100 shekels that is prescribed specifically for the case of a Nara Hamarasa who's accused falsely uh, by her husband. Now, the case there was where he did a Bia and he said based on his Bia, she was not a Basula and that's where he got his accusation from. What if he didn't do a Bia? What if he accused her through other ways? He said, I have witnesses who saw that she was Mizana. So here you have a machokis, and the Gemara is going to have two versions to explain this machokis. Machokis is between Rabbi Huda and the Chachamim. The Chachamim brought in a brisa, say it doesn't matter, same halacha. He gets malchus and he has to pay a hundred sela kenas. Rabbi Huda says, no, the malchus he gets, but the hundred sela kenas he doesn't get. And the reason is as follows the hundred sela kenas is dependent on being part of the Torah specific case. Torah specific case is only where he accused her because of a bia. There, if he didn't accuse because of a bia, he cannot claim there is no hundred shekel, a uh, hundred sela kanas against him. That entire sugya, that parsha doesn't apply. He gets malchus anyway because he violated the isra of losel rachel ba'amecha. That's what the malchus is for, and therefore he's going to get the malchus no matter what. But the hundred shekel, the hundred sela fine is dependent on being part of the case, and that's only if he did it based on a bia. Says the Gemara. Two versions of how to understand this. The first version is that this is based on a machok, it's between the Chachamim and Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. What's that, Machokis? Machokis is very simply the Parsha of Narhamarasa was that only talking about where their, the accusation was based on a Bia. Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov says it was only based on a Bia, and therefore Rabbi Huda is saying like him, and therefore the case where he had a different accusation without a Bia is not included in that sugya, and he doesn't get a hundred salah fine. Chachamim say like the Chachamim uh, that argue on Rabbi ben Yaakov, and say that no, the Parsha is based on any accusation, not necessarily based on a Bia. Now, the more second version is to say that both Chachamim and Rabbi Huda here both hold like a real, like Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. They both hold that it's only in an accusation which is based on a bia, otherwise the parsha does not apply. And therefore here, everyone agrees that the parsha does not apply. And we're changing the machlokas also. The Chachamim and Rebihida both agree that he doesn't get the hundred selah fine, and that's because the parsha doesn't apply. Machlokas says, does he get malchus or not? And that machlokas is based on, is there malchus on a lav she'en by ma'isa? The fact that he said a false accusation is a lav, but there's no ma'isa, it's only speech. Do you get malchus for lav she'en by ma'isa or not? Rabbi Huda says he get malchus, it's a lav she'en by ma'isa. The Chachamim say he won't get malchus because you don't get malchus for a lav she'en by ma'isa. So this, where this doesn't fit with a different price of quotes for Behudo. There he clearly says that he does not get Malkus if he didn't do the Bia. So on that, the Gemara says that uh, we have two answers. Rav Nachman says it's Makas Mardis Midar Abonon. It's not talking about real Makas Mard. It's not talking about real Malkus Araisa. Rav Papa says Malkus here means money. When he says he gets Malkus, he means money. He has to pay the monetary payment. It's not talking about actual Malkus. Now, the Gemara asks, do you ever uh, refer to money as Malkus? The Gemara says, yes, you do. We have a mission that says that somebody says, Chatsi Erkiolai, 
I am willing to pay, I am pledging to the Beis HaMikdash half of my Erech. Erech is a specific valuation that the Torah gives to each person based on his age and his gender. And this person says, I pledge half of it. So let's say my Erech is 50, so I'm pledging 25. So the Lach is that he has to give his full amount. And the Gemara calls that Malkus. He's loike. He has to give his full amount. And here's where we see the word Malkus referring to money. He's he's loike because he has to pay the full amount even the other half, not just the half that he promised the full man. The reason he has to pay it is because it's a very similar language would obligate him to pay it, and that's if he said, I am going to give the erech of half of me, not if he said half my erech. He said half my erech works, he only has to give half, technically, we make him give the whole, but he only would have to give half. But he says, I give the erech of half of me, so there the halach is as follows, half of me, what's half of me? Half of me is not a thing. You can't be half a person. So anytime somebody promises an erech missing a part of his body that he can't live without, he can't be. So therefore he has to give the whole erech. So if he says half of me, he'll have to give the erech of half of me. The halach will be the rest, he'll have to give his whole erech because he can't live with just half a body. Therefore also we make him be the rabbana, give his whole erech if he says I'm giving half my, half my erech, which is a very similar lashon.